Good day, everybody, and welcome to this webinar. Today, the title is Cooler Back to Basics. So without any further delay, let's look at the agenda together, what we are going to talk about today. So we will talk about where heat comes from. We will talk about the IDA thermal management. We will talk about air blast cooler anatomy. We'll talk about integrated bypass, which is still an IDA patent and a point of differentiation from IDAC. We will mention pooling and pushing fun. This is a question that we all been asked every day. Fan drive methods, how to install a cooler, and finally some, some installation and some example. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the webinar. So where heat comes from? The, the best video that I could find to see where the heat come from is this gear here. So this is the best example of a mechanical uh, machinery that is moving and generate heat. So any mechanical function in a machinery cause energy losses. And those losses of energy, they are transformed into heat. And the heat will move, will pass to any fluid that is going through the machine. So what is happening is we have what we call the heat spiral. So let's talk about a heat spiral and what we mean by, by this definition. So we got energy coming in, in the form of heat, like we say before, and this energy or power, call it whatever, will rise the temperature of the fluid that is inside the cooler. So this process will go on but it will not be infinite. At certain point in time, they will reach an equilibrium. And the equilibrium is due to the size of the machine, is due to the gear that is composed with, is due to the surface of the machine. So when, when it's reached this equilibrium, something starts to take effect, like the heat will, is dissipated in the air, in the atmosphere, is going to pass through the material, and can the machine live at this equilibrium? Not really. It can't, it's not good for the machine. So that's why at that point, the job of the cooler guy starts to come in. So we need definitely to cool down lower to this equilibrium because it's something that 99% of the machinery doesn't like to have at the temperature level. And so can we cool back to the origin of this spiral not really not really because we got entropy that is growing and this process is not in a, a reversible process so what's the right temperature well the best is and that's the the let the greek letter eta is viscosity so the best point for viscosity is the best cooling point is where we should strive to size the cooler at the right viscosity for the machine and what's the visco right viscosity? Well, depends on machine to machine, depends on application to application. As a general rule, we go like 30 cent stock for some application, 60 cent stock for other application. But let's say it's it depends, uh, installation to installation, machine to machine. So how IDAC has mastered this strive to 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 keep this heat, to strive to cool this heat. Well, we have what we call a cooling element. That's what we have on the right side. The cooling element is composed by the cooling core, the middle, and the two tank on the side. And the middle part is composed by fins, which we call it air fins or turbolator. Well, we got a lot of variety in IDAC. It's our biggest point of differentiation. We got the external air fin, internal turbolator. Of course, the more you tight these fins, the air side, the more you enhance the performance, the more you open it, the more you reduce the performance. But depending on the sector, whether it's an industrial or a municipal vehicle or a construction equipment, we might use one or the other one. Now, how we do these things or what's behind the geometry of this fin well behind the geometry of this fin there's years and years and hours and hours of computation fluid dynamics cft 
And Hyduck is quite proud of it because every one or two year out of, of, of an established consortium of university and, and companies, um, they come out new geometry. So every one or two year we got a new geometry. Every new geometry has got 5, 10, 15, 20% more cooling power. And this, especially on big coolers, can be a lot of uh, space reduction. Now, what's the theory behind that? Or what's, what's the CFD PhD guy striving for every day? Well, they have a, a dilemma every day because what they have to do is they understand that turbulence is a key factor in the heat transfer. They know that it's their, it's their subject, but they know that is a key factor on both air and fluid side. So the technology that we're using, the technology that we are developing further every single day is plate and bar. So our technology is called plate and bar. And the core and the fins of this plate and bar is based on the optimization of this turbulence level. But it's not only on one way. So a lot of turbulence is good, but it's also bad because high level of turbulence, which technical people could could call it high Reynolds number, it's higher cooling power, but at the same time, higher turbulence inside and outside the, the two fluids create also high pressure drop. So what these people strive every day with CFD is to find the optimal point of turbulence, both on the air side, in external and internal fluid side. So to summarize this, this part, uh, without going too much in detail, we can say that we cool to the inefficiency of a mechanical system. So in a perfect world, IDA will not have the cooling division, you know, and I always say I will be unemployed. But in the normal world with inefficiency on any machine imperfection, we can cool this imperfection and we can cool any fluid, whether it's oil, water, air, that's no problem. And what is the physical principle behind that is what we call conjugate heat transfer theory. Conjugate because the two fluids are not physically in contact, but they are traveling 90 degrees to each other. So the air one side, the fluid on the other side. And the conjugate means that they're not touching, but they are in contact. So how much we cool? Well, it's a big question. Sometimes I say, we cool between 1 to 55% of the cooling power. But this depends on machine to machine. This depends on um, application to application. If you want to know more about that, and if you like this subject, there is a platform where we go deeply and deeply into the thermal degradation of any fluid, and we show the, the micro and micro effect of macro and micro effect of this uh, thermal degradation. And this is the IDAC thermal management course. Uh, the thermal optimization course is um, two times a year in Melbourne. And we also have a practical part, as you can see on the, on the right side. We got a nice training rig where um, the second day, especially, we let the student free to do anything they possibly want and can, just to have a clarified idea of how this phenomena uh, works. But today, the subject is back to basics. So let's, let's really go back to basics. So let's go back to the anatomy of a cooler, how the cooler is made of. And I'm also using another video to, to show that. So this is a, one of our um, cooler series. We got the core we talked about. We got the fan cowling, this circular part or, or housing, like we call it. We got a fan, we got a grid, we got a motor support, and we got an electric motor. So this is just to give you an idea of the composition. So we're talking about a measure of five components. So back to the cooler anatomy. As I say, motor, motor support, grid, fan, four, housing, five, core, six components. So this is the ACLN series, which is our standard industrial series that we currently produce out of Melbourne. And this series is also can be equipped with a screw pump and a filter, and is going to be called ACAF, A-C-A-F. 
is a self-contained unit. We sell a lot of this uh, lubrication unit, especially for gearbox or industrial uh, magnets, and they are quite demand and self-containing unit, and quite accept in the Australian market, especially the mining sector. So let's talk about the integrated bypass. The integrated bypass, it's an IDAC patent. I like to stretch the fact of the word integrated because we really integrate this valve, this function into the cooler. So IDAC patent this technology back in 2003 and we still win a lot of projects due to this technology. So we got a brace channel at the top of the cooler. We got a plug on the left side, completely closed, and we got the bypass valve on the right side of the video. So this is the what we call IBP, Integrated Pressure Bypass, and it's only work on pressure. So when there is an overpressure in the inlet chamber, in the inlet cavity, in the inlet tank of the core, the valve just open and all the flow goes in bypass. So we are still the only company that has a full flow bypass. There's a lot of um, our opposition has tried to copy us, but none of them has the full flow like IDAC does. So when the valve open, 99% of the flow can travel to the bypass. Of course, there is a part of the flow going through the core, and that's why we like the integration of it. So there's nothing that happens outside the core. We also have an evoluted brother, which we call it IBT, which means integrated thermal and pressure bypass. So we have either pressure or pressure and thermal. And we got a little wax element that expand as the temperature rise. So typically it will be open and then at certain point the temperature will start to expand and it close the, the valve. But then if there is an overpressure at the higher temperature, then the conical spring with the IBT function works. So that's the best way to visualize it. Rising temperature, the valve closed, then we reach the correct temperature, valve will fully closed, and then maybe in operation at higher temperature, we can have an overpressure situation. Well, the spring with the valve will retract and get getting to open the bypass. So thermal and pressure or only pressure. So those are the, the two conditions. So again, integrated bypass uh, is integrated into the core. We got a lot of uh, temperature in the range. We got a lot of uh, pr uh, temperature setting, pressure setting. There's a lot of combination available. One little tip that I like to give to all of you is if you are in the field and you don't know if we got an IBP or an IBT, you can look at the uh, size of the hexagonal plug. If it's a high one, like the one here on, on the right picture, it's an IBT. If it's a thin one, it's an IBT. So this is just a trick to give you the quick check on what I have installed in, in my machine. Pulling or pushing fan, that's a, that's a question that makes me smile because I've been asked several times and uh, I'm trying to answer from the IDAC side what, what we think is the good things, what we think is the right things, what we do at IDAC. So let's define pulling and pushing first. So I like to call it a drawing when we draw air from the core and then the air travel at the back of the motor, we call it suction configuration. That's the one on the left here of the screen. That's the one that I uh, use. Then we have blower fan is when we are pushing, we are smashing air through the core and we go there from the back of the fan through the fan through the core. So either coolers are default pulling air through the core. Well, why? Because we use the full core, as you can see on the picture here, the thermal camera uh, image below, and we use the expose the entire surface of the core. So this is called suction. 
the result of a suction configuration fan pooling is increased performance. We use the full area of the core, effective utilization of the space and the air, and definitely low noise. So what if what if what happen if we push? Well, if we push, we got what we call the donut effect, which is can represent here on the left picture, but we have also a nice double cooler here showing the donut effect. You can see they look like a, a highs of a person, and you can see the green area and the red area are area where we are not using the core. So the velocity profile of the fan in that area looks like a donut three-dimensionally, and we only use that part. So the middle is gone, the corner is gone, we are throwing aluminum away. We're not using effectively. So what are the consequences? Definitely more noise because we smash air through an aluminum matrix, so it creates more noise than pulling it. The size will be different, but last but not least, we got a penalty of 15%, up to 50% less performance. So I hope I convince you why IDAC is not doing uh, pushing fan. And now let's talk about the fan drive methods. Three types mainly. We have AC, we have DC, and we have hydraulic motor. So AC, alternate current, standard electric motor, commonly used in industrial application, fixed speed, and it can be a eight pole, six pole, four pole, two pole, and then it refers to 725, 950, 1450, 2900 RPM. DC, it's more commonly used in mobile, also fixed speed and fixed uh, voltage, 12 or 24 volt DC. Hydraulic motor, being an hydraulic company, is what we try to push for in the market, especially in hydraulic mobile machinery, and definitely when there is hydraulic power available. So we think that the modulation with the hydraulic power and also the decoupling features are very good feature to have if you got an hydraulic line. But let's think about, we got infinite energy and infinite power, not really. So over the time, over the year, we come up and we think that, you know, we can master a little bit and have a little bit of energy saving, a little bit of cost saving. Energy is always a premium. We always pay and uh, we have come up with some variable speed drive options. So again, energy saving is the key. We have a VSD incorporated on top of the electric motor for AC. We also have fan with VSD inside the fan, so an electric motor, standard industrial, but encapsulated inside the fan with VSD option. They modulate the fan speed in function of a given temperature that is uh, detected by a PT-1000 or a PT-100, installed on the cooler. And when, when it comes to DC, we got the electronic speed control or the brushless. What's the difference between the two? The electronic speed control is very simple, very basic. He modulates the fan speed in function of the temperature detected by a resistor or a thermistor. And he can also have a reverse and a soft start um, action. The uh, mainly target is machine with low level of electronic brushless fan similar existing same things modulating the fan speed in function of temperature but mainly pitched to machine where there is a lot of electronic on board that can govern logic of, of these fans after talking about modulation of ac and dc let's see what we can do for the hydraulic side well for the hydraulic side we are really at a very sweet uh, point for IDAC because we can go to a customer today and we already win a couple of them already in Australia where we can approach the customer and say anything that is on the right side of this engine, we can do it. We can do the cooler, we can do the combi cooler, we can do the cooler hydraulic drive, we can generate the hydraulic power with a pump on a PTO of your machine. We have the controller that can give you the logic. We have also the uh, manifold uh, integrated or separated 
with uh, logic on valves. So IDAC is really at the sweet spot today because we own and we master all this technology, valve, motor pump, and electronic. How to install a cooler? Majority of you will smile by this question, but it's something that still every day people make it wrong. So I took the opportunity of this webinar to say, let's clarify, let's give a guidance to people because it's not so difficult if you know what you're doing. So the installation of the cooler that I'm talking today is two side, is the air side and the fluid side. So let's look at the left side of the screen. In any of the series that you select, in this case is the ACLN, at the, at the end of every catalog, we got uh, a value, in this case is called A2, A2. So these value are tabulated and is the distance between the back of your electric motor to a, a wall or to um, some sort of constraint and the same things at the front. So the recommendation is always read the manual, always read the brochure and understand if your installation is inside this envelope. More, more than what is declared, not a problem, less we can have a problem. So let's look at the fluid side in this case. What we see here, the good, what we call it, the good is the perfect theory. We go in at the bottom and follow my mouse. We go in at the bottom, we go out of the top. So I'm drawing like a Z. That's why we call it a Z theory. So coming in at the bottom, going out at the top. That's the best way to connect the cooler. But sometimes we got a lot of questions from people say, ah, but I got an IBP and an IBT, sorry. I got an IBP and an IBT installed on the left side of the cooler. So how am I going to connect it? Well, we got our uh, IBP plug at the bottom here. We got the, the cap at the top. So you can go in at the bottom, go out at the top, and it's still a good installation and a good connection. So what is not good? Not good is when we go in at the top and we go out at the top. So we only use the top part of the cooler and it's depending on the flow, you can also lose up to 50% of the cooling power by connecting the cooler in the wrong way. Another way where you can reduce power is that if you ignore the A2 uh, indication and you install the cooler where the wall is alpha way at the back, or you give also a restraint at the front. That's also no good. So let's go to the last no good one. When we go in at the top and down at the bottom. Why we don't like it? Well, temperature rise and heat rise. So you're not using your cooler in an effective way. And again, also here, if you also put it in a box or in a confined environment, it will never work. And as I always say, remember that the cooler has to breathe. So now I'd like to show you a few typical installation examples that you can read more on our uh, web page. They are definitely in our um, area of the um, of the press in 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 our web page in the Australian web page. So the first one is a. Uh, loop system solution for iron ore mining in Western Australia and uh, why I'm selecting that is because you can see we got the suction at the bottom we got the pump delivering the fluid to the filter the duplex filter from the duplex filter in at the bottom of the cooler and then out at the top of the cooler so perfect configuration and as you can see on the picture on the right plenty of air at the back and at the front of the cooler in the real installation. So that's why I like it and I say that's a good example. Another good example is for an oil uh, cooler for a compressor in New South Wales, this case. The previous case is WA actually. Um, the existing uh, normal standard uh, cooler that came with the machine from overseas was not performing in Australia. We know that. We know it's a common, common path and we have resized this cooler and also here, as you, as I told you, on one side we got the bypass. On the other side of the bypass, the guy has put a sensor. And as you see, in at the bottom, out of the top on the left picture, plenty of air on, on both sides. 
Another nice installation. This is a gold mine in USA. Um, made a project made from Australia, delivered it to USA. We got our ACLN 14S there, which is the biggest cooler that we ever made. And you see, although there is a structure protecting it, there is plenty of air in and out. So the, the, the cooler can breathe. Last but not least, we not only do only coolers for oil, but we do for a lot of uh, fluid. And in this case is uh, a genset installation in Perth on the new building of um, Woodside, which is called Capital Square in Perth, WA where our cooler are used to cool a two megawatt engine, MTU engine. So we use water glycol in this case, and uh, we cool the, the, the engine. That's a, a, a black start installation. I also here you see plenty of air at the back, and there is an air uh, cowling at the front to, to, gen, to, to uh, help the air escaping the building. So in this case, we are in the pushing mode. I'll uh, pass to the moderator and see you at the next webinar. Thank you, Andrea, for your presentation. It was uh, very informative, and I, uh, I'm sure that all of the audience appreciated that. Uh, we look forward to see you all here uh, for future webinars because we have uh, a series of them lined up and a lot of very, very interesting topics. And uh, I think this is a, a good opportunity for us to share snippets of information and uh, also to answer some areas where we're very often asked questions. So we look forward to see you and uh, thank you again for joining today. Bye for now.